Hi everyone, so today we are making patashu. Patashu is French for cream puff. It's one of the most uh, used French classic in the repertoire of uh, patisserie. It's uh, used for eclairs, for religious, for profiterole, for a lot of different things. I, it's one of my favorite. It's usually filled with cream or ice cream. Today I'm going to show you how to make it. The recipe is in my book. Everyone can bake. So here we're going to start with the pot and we're going to add the water, the milk, a little bit of uh, sugar, salt, and the butter. So we put all the ingredients in the pot and we're going to bring this to a boil. So when this comes to a boil, almost all the butter is melted and if, even if there's still a few pieces, it's okay. I'm gonna add all the flour at once. So this is just AP flour, regular all-purpose flour. And we're gonna stir until everything is combined together. So this is gonna turn into a paste. And we're gonna walk it until we evaporate a little bit of the water. So we call this step drying the patashu. So we're doing this in order to be able to incorporate eggs after. So we're gonna dry, evaporate, you see all the steam that's coming out, so all the water evaporating from the recipe and everything really like bending together with the flour. So when you know it's ready, it's ready by experience and by looking at it, you look at the texture of the shoe and you wanna make sure it's not too wet and you also see a, a thin skin forming on the bottom, just right here. We have to cook this for, for a few minutes until the skin on the bottom of the pot gets a little thicker. So here I've been cooking my patashu for about three to four minutes. I'm gonna put it in a mixing bowl and you can see it's a quite good texture. And if you look in the, on the bottom of the pot, you can see that skin that is sticking to the pot, but it's actually not burned. So it's very important to lower the heat on your stove to make sure that this doesn't heat up too much. You want to dry out to as much water as you can to have a good consistency. So once you have this consistency, you're actually going to be able to add the eggs. So right now it's still a little bit too hot. We're going to wait probably a good five to 10 minutes to let it cool because if we put the eggs too fast, it will cook the eggs in the batter. So we're going to let it cool for five, 10 minutes. And when it's warm, a little bit hotter than body temperature, we're gonna start adding the eggs one at a time. Okay, now my shoe has cooled down for just a little bit, still like quite uh, warm, warm hot, not piping hot. I'm gonna place it in my mixing bowl and we're gonna add the paddle attachment. So I use a stand mixer, it's a lot easier to mix. If you don't have a stand mixer, you can still mix this by hand. And we're gonna go in first speed, otherwise there's no need to mix it too fast. And then here I have my eggs. So in the recipe you will see a variation for the eggs. It depends on the size of the eggs and it depends on the type of flour you use. AP flour is usually pretty much similar in how much uh, gluten content it has, but sometimes it varies based on uh, the ingredients that you use. So we might use more or less the quantity of eggs. So it's for you to see I will show you the consistency it should be towards the end. I'm gonna add the eggs one at a time. So now I'm gonna add one more egg. The first egg has pretty much been absorbed by the dough. So one more egg, one at a time. I actually prefer if I crack the eggs in a small container first and then I put them into the bowl so I make sure there's no shell going into the bowl. And as we go, I'm going to stop the mixer and scrape the side of the bowl to make sure that everything is fully incorporated. So I go all the way inside the mixing bowl and scrape the bottom and the side.
So today I'm making a double portion for this recipe as I want to show you a different way of piping, different size, different shape. But there's a, a simple recipe in the, in the book if you don't want that many. So that's egg number six for a double recipe. And now I'm looking at the texture. So for the texture, I want something creamy and smooth. I don't want anything too thick. I don't want anything too liquid. So for the consistency, I'm looking at the center of the mix around the paddle. When you stop the mixer, the paddle will ooze down a little bit. So here I have six eggs. I want it to be a little bit softer, a little bit oozier than that. So I'm gonna add one more egg. Again, remember, everything is done in slow speed. We don't want to incorporate any air inside. We don't want to like, whip it. We just want to combine everything together. This is a much better texture now. I can tell already. It's a little bit like smoother, almost like a cream, almost like a paste. And uh, the good thing about uh, the pedal shoe is that it's pretty, fairly easy to work with. Um, a good sign for pedal shoe to be uh, combined and with having all the ones together is to have uh, the dough still warm when you're done mixing it. So once you add all the eggs, it's still warm to the touch. So a little uh, tip to uh, fill the piping bags. I have a regular piping bag, I have a plain piping tip right here. I'm going to open up the piping bag. I'm gonna uh, use my left hand to actually hold the bag just this way and only should have a good grip. And with the other hand, I'm gonna pipe the shoe on the side here and I press it down so I don't overfill my piping bag. And it's better always to do just a little bit in the beginning and then go back and fill a bit more. And then I'll just flip it, flip this up, just this way, pinch it right here, and I can start twisting my piping bag and pushing my batter down. So everything here above my right hand now, it's clean. So if I work clean, I work comfortably, and I have better quality of work. Now, I have a sheet tray right here, a small sheet tray. We're gonna pipe just a tiny bit of the shoe dough in each corner and this is going to help us to make sure that once we put this in the conversion oven the paper doesn't fly away or fly over the shoe. I'm going to press down so to, to stick so now it's stable and now I'm going to with the piping bag so I always put as much as I can in my the palm of my hand. I twist the bag so now I have a good pressure with my right hand. With my left hand it's going to guide my pipe, piping tip. So I'm gonna place it over the tray, about an inch over the tray and start pressing until I form a ball. And I'm gonna re repeat the same step on the tray with leaving probably about an inch of distance between each of them to make sure they don't stick, they don't touch each other when they bake. pipe and I cut the end, I stop when I pipe at the end and I cut it with piping tip. So I press right here, I stop, I stop putting the pressure and then I cut the little tip. So if you have a little tip like this, actually not really good because this will burn or bake too much when you put it in the oven. And this will be perfect little cream puff that you can fill with cream, you can fill with ice cream to make puff at all, finish it with a hot chocolate sauce on top. We're gonna bake this in the oven at 375 degrees Celsius in a convection oven. All right, I've switched out my bag for uh, with a different piping tip. That's a star tip, a, a larger one. I'm gonna use this to pipe eclairs, and we're also going to make high press, which is essentially a donut shape uh, shoe ring that we can then cut in half, fill with hazelnut cream, which is another French classic. So for the eclair, 
I'm gonna uh, angle my piping tip almost horizontal. I'm gonna start putting pressure and pull my batter until the size I want. Get it here and lift it up a little bit. So this takes a little bit of practice. It's not easy to do in the beginning. And you just need steady hands and consistency. Then I'm gonna show you the center array. So essentially it's just a ring that you pipe and we drop it, we drop the shoe to make sure we have a good thickness. And we pipe it into a circle. Alright, here we have our shoe, it's finally out of the oven. So the good way to tell if they're big is actually to take one and to break into it. That's it. The baking is actually pretty nice right here. And we have a nice skin all around. And it's a little bit uh, wet, a little bit hollow in the center. And that's a uh, good timing for baking. And so this was about 20 to 25 minutes depending on the oven. All right, here I have my pastry cream in a piping bag with a small tip. I'm actually going to grab the shoe, uh, go for the bottom. We're gonna press the piping tip inside, just like this, fill it with the cream. And that's the way I like to eat my shoe. You can also fill it with a vanilla ice cream, coil or chocolate, it works very well. And then you break into it, you see this beautiful texture. There you go. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and that you bake with me at home. Cheers.